Sure. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to There and Back again. As always, this is the Patrick Sturdivant here with us in studio today. And I'm just some guy. Pastor, all well, it's fun times. Now, how I do the Patrick Sturdivant is there was a shirt. We were here at church the other day, and this guy walked in with a shirt that said uh, TPS. Yep. Which is like Tomball something services. I like protective services. I don't know. And he's like, hey, those are my initials. I'm like, you, you're the, it's for the Patrick Sturdivant. He's like, no, my first name is, so, uh, <laughs> Tom, Thomas, right? No, yeah, Timothy. Thomas. Thomas. Thomas, that's right. So I'm like, the, that'd be like a boss name, the Patrick Sturdivant. You should just do that. Legally change your name to the Patrick Sturdivant. I don't know how my mom would feel about that. Uh, she may not like it, but it'd be, it'd, it'd be, be pretty, pretty cool. cool. Yeah. It'd be pretty cool. You would be loved by all. And speaking of love by all, we're going to talk about the opposite today. Yeah, we are. We, uh, teased last week we were going to ta- tackle another serious subject. Yeah. We said when we started the podcast that we would not shy around or shy away from the tough subjects. We found right. some fun ones. Found some fun ones, movies, music. But then, yep. seriously, like last week, we talked about war. Huh, yeah. What's it good for? Absolutely. <laughs> Go look it up, kids. Nothing. Nothing. Um, that's not the lyric, look it up, kids, but that's uh, what I'm saying. But... With war comes a level of persecution, and persecution is something that we are really not that <laughs> familiar with in America, in the West, in Christianity. But it's on the rise. Like in Finland right now, the, a Lutheran bishop in Finland and a woman, I, be, I believe she's in Congress, so Finland is a democratic society. Mm-hmm. They're both on trial for hate speech. Mm-hmm. And discrimination because they hold to, there are two genders, male yep. and female. And if this trial goes through, then the Bible and what we preach would be considered a discriminatory hate speech. And you, yep. at least in Finland, could be imprisoned for it. Yep. So this isn't like they're in some Third communist regime or, yeah. or Islamic regime. Mm-hmm. They are in a Western <clears throat> country. And they're getting a, this taste of but even more than a taste now, what it felt like to be a Christian prior to the legalization. Right. Christianity was legalized, meaning you weren't allowed with the backing of the empire to persecute it in 313 AD mm-hmm. called the Edict of Milan. Emperor Constantine said, you know, this is what we're gonna do. You can't you can't just go kill Christians anymore. We're not gonna we're gonna yeah. make it that no religion can be persecuted. And then 325 you get the council of Nicaea, which is where most consider like the church really starts. Now, church exists before then. Church is with Christ, with the apostles. But you look at the apostles. Peter was crucified upside down. Thomas was speared to death. Bartholomew was flayed alive. Mm-hmm. Um, Andrew was crucified. That's how you get the Scottish flag, the cross, yep. the X. Yep. Um, what's it? James was thrown down from a balcony, clubbed and stoned. Mm-hmm. So persecution is not foreign to the church. Remember Jesus himself, blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. But we don't really know what it feels like here to be truly persecuted truly yeah. persecuted for our faith. Now, you may get persecuted for being a jerk. That's different, though. Mm-hmm. Just because you're mean about being a Christian and people don't like you doesn't mean you're persecuted. Or the, the schoolyard bully making fun of you for being... Yeah. A Christian, it, it, like, he would make fun of you for being fat. Yeah. So it's like, eh. um, but the thing is, I would make fun of myself. I was homeschooled, so I was the bully and the one being picked on. I'd look in the mirror like, you, you know, like, go cry to my teacher. My teacher's so mean, it's your mom, I know. Um, but homeschool kids, I get that joke. But, but the thing is, we kind of had a little, little taste of this with COVID. Like, churches being right. shut down, yep. where, bar, like, um... Um, so other certain places could remain on the like liquor stores and so why can they stay open but churches can't mm-hmm. and we didn't handle it well the church didn't handle yeah for sure that 100%. little yep. taste of persecution well so what happens if it really comes you get some regime or a government says you know what no you can't preach this stuff anymore mm-hmm. and if you do we are going to throw your pastors in jail you're going to get fined or you yourself could even go to jail for confessing it. Mm-hmm. And it's not something to be scared about. Something, look at Jesus. He says this to close the Beatitudes. Matthew 5, 11 through 12. He goes from blessed are they to blessed are you. Mm-hmm. Blessed are you when others revile you and persecute you 
and utter all kinds of evil against you falsely on my account. But then verse 12, he says this, he says, Rejoice and be glad, for your reward is great in heaven. For so they persecuted the prophets who were before you. So in persecution, we don't grumble, we don't get depressed, we don't get sad. What we do is we rejoice. Great. So how should someone, a youth that might be listening to this, um, that by the time that they are our age, we'll be on our way to old and gray. Yeah. More so than we are. Getting there now, yeah. Yep. Um, when they're our age, and this is prob- likely even more of a potential, um, who knows? You know yeah. what I mean? How, how, do they, how are they supposed to respond to potential persecution? The thing is, being persecuted means you're being hated by something you don't value. We value the Word of God. That's mm-hmm. our, our gift, our joy is the Word of God. So right now in a time of not being persecuted, digest the Word of God. Memorize it, study it, because one day it could be taken away. Mm-hmm. So don't sit there and fight it. Memorize it now. Study it. And, and treasure those things that need to be treasured. Don't fight for something that doesn't matter. Like, for instance, the First Amendment is freedom of, of religion. Mm-hmm. That's not our priority to protect. Our priority is to believe, teach, and confess the Word of God. The church existed before 1776. It'll yeah. exist after that freedom is taken away. Because right. Christ is the one that does it, not a government. Your essential nature is not based on a government thinking so, mm-hmm. but on Christ claiming you in the waters of baptism and forgiving you your sins. That's what makes you essential in the eyes of the Father. So how do you react when persecution comes your way? You rejoice. If it's a right persecution for confessing the truth, you, you rejoice and say, hey, they did this to the prophets, they did it to Jesus, they did it to the saints, they're doing it to me. Because at some point, when you're confessing the truth, eventually the persecution will come, no matter yeah. what. We get little bits of it right now. People right. may not like you. Um, if you speak the truth, you may be shunned by it. You may lose friendships over it. Even family relationships get broken up, and that will yep. happen. But the day when it comes where your pastor's just preaching a faithful sermon... And they come in and take him and put him in some chains, and he ends up in jail for four years. Then you can you say, yep. "Hey, that means we're doing the right thing. We're actually preaching mm-hmm. the truth. We're speaking it, but you speak it in love." So that's the line you always have to be cautious. Don't speak it with a judgmental, jerky attitude, because then you're just persecuted for your personality. And at the same, and I also think that that increases the persecution. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's one of the reasons why I think Christians are painted in such a way that they are now, unfortunately, is because that gains attention, and that's yeah. controversial, and that's what gets people to look. Right. Um, when you have other churches um, holding gigantic signs. Well, like the Westboro signs, Baptist. Like, exactly, Westboro yeah. Baptist hanging. Um, I wasn't going to say anything. I don't want them to dox us. Oh, no, that'd be pretty funny. Joke. Yeah. <laughs> um, come at us, bro. No, but when they're holding signs outside of uh, funerals and things like that, that's the way Christianity is painted. Right. And, th- and at the same time, that creates the persecution. We, we look at Jesus. What was he doing the week he was put on trial? He wasn't rolling around screaming and yet, well, after cleansing the temple. That was kind of a big deal. But he's teaching. He's just sitting in there teaching. Yep. Healing people, teaching. And, and then look, he has his last supper with the disciples and cleans their feet. So that's, that's what it, because they, they won't know who we are by the Westboro Baptist attitude. John yep. 13, 34 through 36, by a new commandment I give you, that you love one another. By this they will know. Mm-hmm. You are my disciples, my followers, if you have love for each other. So how else do we act in persecution? We love each other. We encourage them, we support each other. We be Samwise. We'll take, this is from Lord of the Rings, of course. Yep. Where the podcast comes from, you should be familiar. So Sam, right, says to Frodo, I may not be able to carry the ring for you, but I can carry you, and then picks Frodo up and carries it. Mm-hmm. And that's what we do for each other in persecution. I can't carry specifically what you're going yep. through, but I can help carry you and what Through your going burdens, through. yeah. That's what we do in persecution. We rejoice, and we bear the cross together. Because of the wholeness and satisfaction we have in being forgiven as children of God. So... It's great. So memorize, like, and in the time being, just start di- digesting scripture. Yep. Memorize it so that if the day comes where your Bible is taken away, yep. you don't have to stomp and scream. You should know it by now. And, and that's not something that's unfamiliar to the Christian church, memorizing mm-hmm. the scriptures <clears throat> no. in light of persecution. Yeah. Like ancient Christians memorized the scriptures. Yeah. They've memorized the whole yeah. thing. 
Um, it's like the, the, the book uh, Fahrenheit 451. Yep. You know, at the end of it, they have these. That's a good book, kids. Read it. It's Ray Bradbury. The, the guys are around the fire at the end, and they're not calling each other by their name. They're calling each other by the book they've memorized. Mm -hmm. And one guy's called Luke because he memorized the gospel yep. according to St. Luke. Why not? If you can memorize Lady Gaga songs or uh, what's her name? Ari not not a Ariana. It's Ariana, not Air, because there's no Ariana. Ariana, Grande. Ariana or what's her name? Um, the one with all the dumb songs about driving and licenses. Olivia and, Rodrigo. Olivia Rodrigo. Ah, oh, I can't stand Olivia Rodrigo. So, but then I hate it because when her songs come on, I I turn it up and I can't help myself. But still, it's catchy. You know, but it, if you can memorize every Olivia Rodrigo song, even though they're the same song, basically. You can memorize scripture. It's not that hard. It's joyful. So do it now so that if it's taken away one day, you're not like, oh, no, you took my yeah. faith away. No, they didn't. They took this it's physical book away, but it's here. It's here. So it's fun time. Amen to that. All right. Fun, fun. Let's do something fun next week. We'll do something fun next week. It'll be a fun time. Thank you for joining there and back again. Again, uh, check us out next week. Check higherthings.org out. Uh, we'll see you next week. Bye -bye. Adios, muchachos.